gospel reading comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, and it is another one of the post-resurrection appearances. This is the story about the road to Emmaus. You may have heard this story before, but let us listen to it. It's Easter evening, the two people are on the road, and they're joined by a stranger. That same day, two of them were walking to the village Emmaus, about seven miles out of Jerusalem. They were deep in conversation, going over all the things that had happened in the middle of their talk and questions. Jesus came up and walked along with them, but they were not able to recognize who he was. He asked, what are you discussing? so intently as you walk along. And they just stood there, long-faced, like they had lost their best friend. Then one of them, his name was Cleophas, said, Are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what happened during the last few days? He said, What has happened? And they said, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene he was a man of God, a prophet, dynamic in work and word, blessed by both God and all the people. Then our high priests and leaders betrayed him, got him sentenced to death and crucified him. We had hopes that he was the one, the one who was about to deliver Israel. And it is now the third day since it has happened. Now some of the women have completely confused us. Early this morning, they were at the tomb and they couldn't find his body. They came back and the story that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of our friends went out to the tomb to check out and found it just as the women had said but they didn't see Jesus. Then he said to them, so thick-headed, so slow-hearted, why can't you simply believe all that the prophets said? Don't you see these things had to happen, that the Messiah had to suffer and only then enter his glory? And then he started at the beginning with the books of Moses and went through all the prophets pointing out everything that the scripture referred to him. They came to the edge of the village where they were headed. He acted as if he was going on, but they pressed him. Stay and have supper with us. It's nearly evening. The day is done. So he went in with them. And here is what happened. As he sat down at the table with them, and took the bread, he blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And at that moment, they were open-eyed, wide-eyed, recognized him. And then he disappeared. Back and forth they talked. Didn't we feel as the fire as he conversed with us on the road, as he opened up the scriptures for us? Here ends the scripture reading for this day. May God add his blessing to the hearing of his word.
imagine that a lot of us really haven't noticed or cared when the Oscar celebration is going to be this year. I know I've not been to a movie in a theater this year. I've watched some of the nominated movies online, but I couldn't tell you all the shows that are up for that. I bet there are some of you who could tell me the baseball standings a lot easier than you could tell me when the Oscars are going to be on or who is nominated. This week, I'm here to do a public service announcement and let you know that the Oscar ceremony is next Sunday, the Sunday on the 25th, and that will be the time when we find out what's what movies have won and who the actors are that have won and all of that. There is a movie nominated called Nomad Land, and it has been running on Hulu. Now, for some of you, you may have Hulu on your TV. You may have had kids who helped you put it on TV, on your TV. And maybe you don't even know what Hulu is. But I had a chance to watch Nomadland a couple of months ago. And it's an affecting movie that takes the story that had been written down about the nomad life that is going on in our country, particularly with people that are kind of at that retirement age, but not quite there, who don't have a lot of savings, but take to the road. And in that story, we follow one woman in particular named Fern, who is moving out of a life because her husband is dead and the community where she had lived it was decimated by the closing of a mine. And we follow her as she makes her journey from part-time part -time employment, not so much part-time employment, but full-time employment in a variety of different places. And as you follow the story, some of the actors that have been included in this movie are people who are actually from that nomad community. And in the final scene of the movie, they're talking about how it is that they don't really want to say goodbye, rather they'll see you later. And I know for some of you that that's something that you do in your family or with your friends, that you don't spend a lot of time saying goodbye because you know you're going to see them again or you hope you'll see them again. And in that sense, this movie, which I invite you, if you do have Hulu, to go look at, to go pull it up and watch it. But in this movie, it's our entrance point into the scripture reading for today. In that reading that we have for today from the Gospel of Luke, we have it being Easter almost evening. The hubbub is still going on. People are totally upset by the fact that Jesus is dead and buried. And now there's probably crazy stories running around on the way that somebody's saying that he's alive and nobody knows what to believe about all of that. And we find ourselves on the road with two characters, Cleophas and an unnamed person doesn't really matter. They are representative of a community who has been decimated by the death of Jesus. A community that is so overwhelmed and scared by what might be happening to them. And along comes this stranger who acts as though he's never heard anything about this. Jesus who? And they walk along and they tell him the story as they make their trek to this next town seven miles down the road. And as they go along, this conversation gets deeper and deeper as the one who has joined them, the stranger, starts telling them all about scripture in a way that seems familiar, but at the same time, how can it be that this stranger would know all those stories? When they come up to home, they pull off and they say, we'll see you later. 
and the man hesitates and they invite him in. And it's at that moment when he sits down at the table with them finally to break bread that they recognize who it is. It's Jesus. Jesus is the one that has come to be with them again. And as we hear that story, it is a see you later story. For our faith in Jesus Christ is all about that see you later. We trust that at the end of our days that we will be welcomed into the wonders of heaven and that Jesus will say, I told you you'd see me later. I told you I'd be waiting. I told you that there'd be a room ready. I told you that I'd be here. In these words, we hear the promise and hope that those disciples on the road to Emmaus, when they got home, they probably couldn't go to sleep that night as they realized the stories were true. As we hear this story today, it's a couple of weeks since Easter happened. It seems as though maybe we ought to be moving along from that place. But yet this particular story invites us in. It invites us to look at how it is that we continue to live our lives as people who have heard this good news and who are living with this good news. This last week, I was in a Zoom meeting with some pastors from our presbytery, and we got to talking about what it's going to be like as maybe we can start moving back to what we had used, used to expect that church would look like, a place where we could gather, a place where we wouldn't have to necessarily wear masks or worry about distancing, a place where we could gather together. And the a presenter that day was talking about the fact that, yes, we've got great big hopes for all of that taking place. But he invited us to see that as we go into whatever this next moment in life is going to be like in the United States and in the world, that we carry what we've learned through this time of pandemic with us that we don't forget it entirely, and that we bring it along with us. As we do those things, we bring along the fact that we may continue some kind of online worship service long after we have returned to the sanctuary, because we know that there are still people out there in that want to hear our stories, want to hear our music, want to carry that along, and that that message that Jesus Christ tells us about is a message that has a place here in this sanctuary, but also online, and also in other ways that we might be discovering about how to reach out to our community, to our world. This is a story that invites us to know that there is always the hope and promise that Jesus walks with us. A lot of times you may have known an experience where a friend says the right thing to you at the right time, where a stranger shows up and says something to you that makes sense for that moment. Is that perhaps a ministry of Jesus who has sent a friend, who has sent a stranger, who has offered up an opportunity by which we hear the message come alive and be real. This message that we receive from Jesus as the same kind of thing that happened on the road. Sometimes when we're down and out, sometimes when we don't know what to make of everything, we need a word from somewhere. Let us be on the lookout for that word. Let us remember that if we feel as though we're at wit's end, or maybe we're at a joyful day, that Jesus walks with us and might just surprise us. 
Let us hold on to these words on this day. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen.
As we take time to give thanks for all of the good gifts, again, I want you to imagine what it is that is in your life that is a good gift. Family, friends, the arrival of spring, or the slow arrival of spring, as we look toward a forecast this week that doesn't look particularly warm. But we trust that God has given us good gifts. He invites us to be good stewards of all that we have received. And as we receive gifts for this church, may we be good stewards in all that we have received. Let us pray. Loving God, hear our prayers as we gather in this place for the many gifts that we receive. We thank you this day for the ones that we name now in our hearts and minds. Surround us, O oh God, with your presence and care on this day, and bless the gifts that have been given to this community of faith. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen. Now go in peace, serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit now and always. And all God's people say, Amen.